Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be describing characters for an upcoming project, The Ghost Hunters of Gaines Town Center. If you remember, I did a video a while back designing the characters. This was for a class project and they were supposed to be the main characters and like a little team, but now I've decided to turn their characters into a story. I'm still writing it at the moment and I don't have a set time for when it's going to come out, but while we wait, I'm going to be designing the other characters that will appear in the story, starting with Brianna's mom's punk rock band, otherwise known as them all. Before we get too far into the video, this was all streamed live over on Twitch. You can follow me over there if you ever want to see me designing these characters in real time. You can even give suggestions and interact with me live. This is also why Melvin is stuck in the corner of the screen. But anyway, back to the video. This is Raya. She is Bree's mother and co-founder of The Mall. Her late husband and her formed this band together just for fun with some close friends. They didn't have much luck to start off with and it took them many years before they actually started to get serious with music and make anything that was worth anyone's time. And by that point, her husband had started getting sick and eventually he passed. Bree was still pretty young and doesn't remember much of her dad. I took this loss pretty hard and it was in a really dark place for a while and she struggled to figure out how to be a single mom and go on without her best friend by her side. She became very isolated for a while and was kind of like a shut-in and refused to leave the house for pretty much anything. She also developed a bit of a hoarding problem and would refuse to throw any of her husband's old stuff away. Eventually, the other band members convinced her to channel her pain into music and got her to sing again. Raya then made it her mission to keep her husband's memory alive through the band and bringing their music across the country and pushing it as far as she could. She's grown a lot since then, but she still has little quirks and habits that she does. But as a leader of the band and a single mother, she does her best to try to put on a strong face and just carry on. That's the basic rundown for her character. Raya is one of my favorite parents. I love her so much. I'm a little bit biased because she is one of the parents that I wrote. Uh, she is one of the first parents that I wrote in the story. She is a very chill mom. She is more of like a cool aunt type vibe. She is very strict, but when she means business, she means business. She loves horror and darker things, so she feeds into Bree's obsession a little bit, which is one of the reasons why she's playing at Gaines Town Center to begin with. She does her best to be a good mom and support her daughter in basically any way that she can. The band is all super close with each other and they're all pretty much like family and she relies very heavily on them and sort of vice versa. In terms of design, I wanted her to be a more of a younger mother. She did a lot of things really young, so she still has a lot of learning herself to do. I was kind of trying to mix a balance of maturity and a freedom lifestyle associated with punk rock. She definitely doesn't follow all the rules, but she does try to be responsible. Um, the parents don't play a huge role in the overall story, but I think out of all of them, Raya has like the biggest part to play in the story, and I'm very excited to see her uh, as it continues. And next up is our band's drummer, Clyde. He was actually the first member that I drew. Originally, I sketched it on my iPad, so the formatting is a little bit different. I did plan his clothes out during stream though, but you don't get to see him fully um, like put together until the end. I sorry about that. <laughs> Clyde was Raya's husband's best friend. They grew up together and were basically brothers. He had gotten into music at a really young age and always dreamed about being in a band. So when Raya and her husband came to him with this idea, he was fully on board. He helped them find their voice in music and he would stay up late with Raya's husband to write music together and find their next sound. When Raya's husband fell ill, Clyde would help out as much as he could, and he promised to take care of Raya and Bree if they ever needed it. When he finally passed, Clyde moved in to help Raya more. Since Raya's mental health declined after her husband's passing, she had lost her stable job, and Clyde was the one providing stable income for them. He slept in the guest bedroom, and he would help out with things around the house. At one point, when Clyde was attempting to pack away some of Raya's husband's things into the basement, they got into a big fight, and she almost kicked them out but the rest of the band was able to convince her that she needed support and they were only trying to help. Clyde eventually convinced her to switch to drums for a while to help her play out her emotions and eventually when Raya was able to heal a little bit more, she went back to being the lead singer. And since then, Clyde has been the one and only drummer. And I think you know the rest. <laughs> Sorry, I've watched the Across the Spider-Verse movie so many times now that I, I just needed to mention it. 
actually designed Clyde around the day it was released and I was so scared that he would look like Hobie. I was trying so hard and fighting the urge not to just draw Hobie. I will say now that I'm not very well versed in the punk rock genre or style so I was relying very heavily on my references and just trying my best to make them all look different. <laughs> I will say I'm a very big sucker for like for layers and vests especially so there is kind of a lot of overlap in that department um, but I did have a lot of fun with Clyde's accessories. Uh, he has a lot of dangly bits and bops I wouldn't say that he's a metalhead quite yet, but he has debated getting a piercing over paying rent before. Um, he really likes the feeling of jewelry while he's playing and he feels like it adds to the momentum of, of the music. He does still try to be safe and he doesn't really wear anything that would do too much harm for him if he accidentally gets smacked in the face with it, which has happened before and he learned his lesson after getting a black eye once. He's very close to Raya and Bree and he cares a lot about them. Unlike Raya, however, he doesn't really like that Brie is, as he would say, obsessive over death and spends all her time looking at ghost stories and haunted places. He worries that when she's not at school, she'll just hang in the house with the rest of the band and doesn't really have friends that are her age. Not in person anyway, because Brie spends a lot of time in online chat rooms and forums and stuff. Clyde definitely is someone who would get freaked out by that stuff really quickly and has taken things away like Ouija boards from B. Clyde doesn't really believe in ghosts, but he also doesn't want to stick around to find out. <laughs> if they're really there, he would rather just leave them alone than, and let them do their own thing while he does his. Clyde doesn't play a huge role in the story and only shows up a few times, but when the time comes, he will be a voiced character, so he does get some lines. <laughs> and last but not least, our character Yannick, our electric guitarist. Yannick is the youngest member and was the last to join the band. He joined just a few months before Raya's husband passed away and while the band took a break, he kind of went off on his own to try and make money, but he never really found a band or place that fit him and he ended up coming back and now he lives in the basement of the house. Initially, when Yannick had joined the band, he wasn't even 18 years old yet and he had a very strained relationship with his parents and was forced to kind of make it on his own, so he learned how to pick up like odd jobs here and there just to make ends meet and this allowed him to make a lot of connections with people despite his demeanor. Yannick is a pretty silent dude and doesn't really talk often. He keeps his thoughts to himself usually and he rarely shows his face and just kind of tends to hang around in the background but despite his silent tendencies he's a very goofy and heartwarming personality. He often plays pranks on the rest of the band and is joined by Brie occasionally. He's a very compassionate person and he's always there to listen and help you feel better when you're down. He isn't a very forward person, but he is very chill if you ever get the chance to hang out with him. <laughs> I really love Yannick's design and he's probably my favorite one. I am the most happy with it. He came out exactly how I wanted him to look. And I love how his hair looks in that beanie. It, he's just like, he's just a goofy little guy. <laughs> I feel like he would help out doing chores around the house. Um, and like cooking meals. He seems like someone that would be like really good at cooking and doing some cleaning but like never during the day or like at a convenient time. You would just see just at some random ass time he just emerges out of the basement with cleaning supplies. I think it would be so funny if he was just like at 3 a.m. or something. Bree's like getting a glass of water or something like from the kitchen and just like is passing like a doorway and then it's just like Yannick cleaning something in like complete darkness. Like, like those house elves, I think they're called like, they're called like brownies or something and they come and like fix up your house at night. It's, it's from like folklore. I don't remember where exactly from. I remember reading about them in the Fable Haven books, but yeah, that, that's, that's what I, that's what I see for you. <laughs> he seems like the very like insomniac type. I think it's the hair. It's giving off a very, I'm sensitive to light kind of vibe. It's very nocturnal, like a bat. That's our, that's our nocturnal, right? I think they are. Yeah. Well, yeah, because because Batman. Yeah. <laughs> it's late. Okay. Anyway, uh, Yannick doesn't play a very big role in the story. I don't even think he'll be voiced at all. He He's naturally silent and just doesn't speak. Um, if anything, he'll be mentioned a few times here and there, but he doesn't really have like an impact on the main story in any huge or significant way. 
Uh, so yeah. But he will be in posters and promotional stuff. <laughs> and with him, that wraps our second set of characters for the Ghost Hunters of Gainstown Center story. And here they all are together. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy this video and want to keep up with this project, then click the like button and subscribe so you can follow along with the stories as it progresses. Um, I don't know exactly when the final story will be out, but I will be working on it for sure. So I will have more character designs on the way and eventually I'll open up casting calls for them too. So be on the lookout. Um, the best way to kind of keep up to date with projects and opportunities is to join the Drama Yama Straws Discord or follow me on any of my socials. I try my best to keep them as updated as I can. And I recently started using Twitter. So uh, there's that. <laughs> I will link those down below so they're easier to find. And thank you again so much for watching. Would you ever watch them all perform live? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.